Alrighty guys, welcome back to the shop. This is part one of a multi-part hunter build. I'm not quite sure how many parts there are going to be in this build, but I'm shooting for around three narrated videos with an additional full recap video. This template will make these more complex builds more digestible. As I've told y'all in my past few builds, I'm migrating towards forging more blades and my skills need some serious work. Right now I'm at the point where I forge thick and grind thin, but I'm hoping to hone my shaping technique with practice. To aid in this endeavor, I've ordered some new tongs to help with the next blade after this one. I plan on fabricating a hot cut hardy for my anvil, and I've replaced my forge's gas regulator and hoses, so stay tuned on that front. Once I got the basic shape for the hunter, I drew out the tang in my press, then left the forged blade in vermiculite for a few hours to ensure it cooled down soft before grinding. My first task on the grinder is to remove the bulk of the forging scale, as well as clean up the profile and flatten the ricasso. I'm also going to cut some excess material off the tang, since I had a lot left over from forging. For basic flattening and cleanup, my DIY surface grinding attachment is still going strong, and the chuck from Northridge is great. The movement you see in these clips is the weight of the chuck moving the whole grinder in a horizontal orientation, which I didn't even notice till reviewing this footage. It doesn't have any bearing on the final workpiece, but I may look into the grinder to see if I can tighten things up. After looking over my blank, I ended up drawing out a smaller blade than I forged, so I'll have to do some reduction here. I put my template on the forged blank, sprayed on some marking fluid, and cut the bulk of the excess material away on the bandsaw. I then set up my work rest at 90 degrees and clean up the profile on the 2x72. This is a good place to mention the VersaFlow respirator that I've been testing out over the last few months. I plan on doing a full review of this respirator, but it's safe to say that I'm a huge fan so far. It's especially useful for us bearded individuals and the comfort level is way higher than normal respirators. Not to mention, it's nice to have full face protection. While it's pretty darn expensive, so are medical bills, and I do enough grinding in my shop that I could justify the cost. So anyway, stay tuned to the channel for that review in the coming months. At this point, I've scribed a center line on the blade and I'm roughing in my pre-heat treat bevels with a work rest and the push stick grinding method. There are a laundry list of great knife makers who have used this push stick method, so I figured it was worth learning. I like the ability to apply pressure with the push stick and find that it works very well for hogging off material. The push stick I'm using is made of Teflon and this material makes the whole operation smoother than using something like wood. The push stick hand is controlling where you remove the material, whether it's towards the edge or towards the spine of the knife. Your pulling hand should be doing just that, pulling, and nothing more. I haven't mastered this technique and still revert back to the freehand grinding, mostly post heat treatment due to fears of overheating the edge, but I hope to get better with this method over time. So this is our blade in its chunky state, roughed in and ready for heat treating. My preheat treatment edge is around 29 to 38 thousandths of an inch, which gives me a good deal of meat to remove after heat treating, but also gives me some wiggle room if it moves around some during the quench. At this point, it's time to start up the DIY heat treating oven to get this blade normalized and hardened. So far, this oven has been doing an awesome job for me, and I'm extremely happy to have more control over my hardening process. I ended up doing two normalizing cycles here, but I'm only showing footage for one of them. The first one was at 1650 degrees, and if I remember right, the second one was around 1600 degrees even. I then brought the blade up to 1520 degrees and quenched in Parks 50 for around 7 seconds before placing the blade in my straightening clamp. With these forged blades, I'm starting to do more bevel grinding before heat treating, and I'm happy to see my clamp is still keeping them pretty darn straight after quenching. I do some light sanding on the blade to remove the bulk of the surface scale, then perform a poor boy hardness test with the file. The file skated easily on the 10A4 blade, so I'm confident it hardened fully. Using my PID control toaster oven, I'll be running two tempering cycles at 425 degrees Fahrenheit, lasting two hours each. In between tempering cycles, I like to retighten my C clamps on my angle iron jig just to make sure the blade is held straight and doesn't move around during the second cycle. With a heat treated knife, it's time to start cleaning it up on the grinder. I start off by surface grinding the flats. This gives me a parallel ricasso to work from and also brings the ricasso up to a fairly high grit. Once the flats are trued up, I like to clean up the spine of the knife by putting my grinder in the horizontal position. This step, if done correctly, also gets the spine pretty darn square with the ricasso. 
When setting up to do my bevels, I noticed my steel platen had some deformation after months of use. So I decided to take it off and reflatten it. I do this every few months and I feel like it has a very positive impact on my bevel grinding. I also feel like this process of reflattening my platen with my surface grinding attachment is easier than affixing a ceramic glass platen onto my grinder. I'm sure this preference and method would work even better with a hardened D2 platen, but in my case, it's just mild steel. With some center target lines scribed in, I get grinding with a 60 grit ceramic belt. I'm shooting for around 10 thousandths of an inch at the edge with this flat grind. Also, I mentioned earlier I'm grinding freehand post heat treatment. I like being able to feel the blade with my bare hands to ensure I'm not overheating the edge. However, I feel like with some more practice on the push stick method, I could employ it post heat treatment in the future. Once I get pretty close on the main bevels, I take the knife back to the granite surface plate and scribe a center line on the spine of the knife. This helps a ton while trying to make sure my tip is in the center and the grinds are truly even. I then mark with a red sharpie on the blade where I need to remove more material. This is an iterative process and I go back to the surface plate to rescribe my targets often. If you have a variable speed drive on your belt grinder, this is a really good time to slow it down so that you can ease into these targets and reduce the chances of ruining your blade's temper. I continue to get this blade moved to the right spot, then worked up to a 120 grit belt finish. I'm finding the more time I spend here, the easier my life is at the hand sanding bench. To take that a step further, I've heard that a disc grinder can make your hand sanding even better, so I'll be sourcing one of those soon to play around with. With the flat grind done, I moved to the slack belt portion of my grinder to put in a convex grind on the edge. This apple seating geometry only extends about three quarters of an inch up the bevel. I applied some sharpie to the blade in order to track this progress towards the spine. Once I got the convexing in, I decided to take a page out of Kyle Royer's book and test the blade before going any further. I sharpened it up on my diamond stone to a good working hair shaving edge and then went outside to cut a two x four and a half. One thing I didn't show here was that I wrapped the tang with duct tape in order to get a good grip on it while chopping the board. It took a little time, but the knife performed pretty well on the board and was able to still easily shave hair after testing. Now that the knife is a verified performer, it's time to start finishing out the finer details with the grinder. The first thing we need to dial in here are the plunge lines. I put a file guide on the blade and scribe some layout lines on both sides of my plunges, and then set up my waterfall platen. This platen has a 1 16th of an inch radius on the edge, and I'll be using a 120 grit J-Flex belt to get started. I eventually worked up to a 220 grit belt on this platen. Once the plunge lines are dialed in, I used a small wheel to clean up the underside of the ricasso. I want the edge to start right away and continue all the way to the tip, and I also wanted a nice radius here. So at this point we have a heat treated and performance tested blade with even plunge lines. In the next video we'll be focused on fitting the guard and probably grinding in a small clip on the spine. If we have time in video number two, we'll also start on the handle and finial to pull it all together with the final finish work occupying video number three. As always, I hope you all enjoyed this video and if you did, please consider subscribing to the channel so that you can be notified when the subsequent parts of this hunter build come out. Until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.